Hey, this is Rinkin. Consider this a follow-up to the previous video. A bit of an off-the-cuff addition to make a Cars Breakable and Moon. There's no fundamental difference in how a car is rigged compared to any other object. Well, civil joints are virtually the same as any joints, but for cars specifically, you might find yourself having difficulties doing complicated animations using the standard rigging technique, which is basically making a brick with wheels. In this video, I want to discuss drifting. If you want to emulate initial D, making a brick with wheels isn't going to suffice. Well, you can't, but there's better ways to achieve this. So why is a brick with wheels insufficient in drifting animation? At the end of the day, these are cars. How different can driving and drifting be? Well, drifting has a technical definition, but if you ask me, it's when a driver turns the corner in a way that causes traction of the wheels and the road to misalign. Confused? Then let's just divide the aspects of drifting into threes. Curving, skidding, and pivoting. Curving means that the path of the car needs to be smooth. This might sound easy given the access to smooth interpolation of Moom, but that's temporal smoothing, not spatial. This means that the timing of the animation is smooth, but not the actual path of the car. Let's show this by doing the circle test, animating a car that they're going around in a circle. This seems simple. The first thing you might do is put three or four keyframes of the car at the outer radius of the circle. But if you do this, you'll notice how jagged the path is. Because the car isn't moving in a curve, it's going straight to the keyframes. This won't be fixed using different interpolations or splitting the keyframe. You can only smoothen the path by adding more keyframes. But you can easily see how this can make your animation track look a bit busy. It's also not precise. It causes the path to be janky and wobbly. This is fixed by changing the rotation point of the car away from the body into the center of the circle. Usually how people do this is making a rig specifically designed to rotate in this way. However, in this video, we'll explain how to generalize this. Next is skidding, effectively having the car's orientation misaligned to the road, such as the tire skids. Once again, this feels simple, but the brick with wheel design can make this a pain. Yeah, it's easy to animate a car in a different orientation to the road, but if you wanted to adjust the keyframes later, it can be a pain since you're animating the position and rotation of each keyframe. Doing minor adjustments can become a major hassle. Last is pivoting. I think the biggest flaw of the standard brick with wheel design is it doesn't rotate in the way a real car does. By default, the car model rotates at the center of the body. Now, this rotation point is closer to the center of mass, but if you drove a car, you realize that the car actually rotates at the front. So a brick with wheel approach doesn't replicate how a real car reorients itself. But sometimes a car doesn't rotate at the front. Sometimes it needs to rotate in the center and maybe in the back, depending on the physics of the scene. Regardless, we need to figure out a way to animate where the car can rotate. Now, this is an extra point, largely unrelated to drifting, but it's important when animating the wheels of the car. For a car to move, the wheels must spin. Duh. Animate the wheel to spin isn't rocket science. In fact, you can animate it rotating once and then looping it over and over again. However, the wheels must be used to steer the car by rotating it vertically. Now you find yourself unable to do this because the wheel's rotation loop has locked the wheel's vertical orientation. Even if you do it by hand, you have to reanimate the loop so it spins in the correct orientation. Similar to the problem of skidding, in which each keyframe animates both position and orientation of the body, the wheel's keyframe animates all axes of rotation, meaning that all axes of rotation don't rotate independently. Now going through all that, what can we do to rig the car to be ready for drifting by solving all these problems? It's simple. In fact, all these points are actually dealing with the same issue. You need to add more joints to the car. Adding more joints adds more flexibility and articulation. It also allows you to isolate the orientation of the joints to their component parts. This solves a lot of problems, like skidding and wheel steering, because with the extra joints, you can animate the rotation components in position separately. It also allows you to change the pivoting of the joints. By having two joints, you can have one joint sit to the pivot and the other move the joint back to its original spot. You now have a pivot position that you can animate anywhere. This solves the issue of curving and pivoting. Just that one handles the pivoting of the car from outside of the body and the other inside of the body. Now I'll do a live demonstration to rate the car for drifting in two ways. One way only requires the standard moon animation wheel tool. The other will use RSVP's rig utility plugin that will be significantly faster. Okay, let's open up studio to begin the rigging process. Now I'm going to assume that you already welded the wheels and the body parts just so we can generalize this and kind of expedite uh, the process here. I'll uh, make this easier visually and uh, color the pivot points uh, in different colors. For example, the red one is going to be the curve 
the one that will use to rotate and curve the car. The other one is going to be pivoting the body so you can like rotate at a certain point of the car's body. Now before I go ahead and rig everything, I'm going to add a root part so the car can move um, without having to animate the C-frame value of the model. Very simple process. Just duplicate the body and then just uh, parent it back into the model and you should have it. And after this, you're going to do the rigging process. And what you're going to do is rig from the root to the curve to the pivot to the body. In this case, it would be the invisible part, which is the root, and then uh, the red block, and then the blue block, and then finally, you're going to weld directly to the car. Now make sure that um, the root is anchored and not everything else, otherwise it's not going to behave correctly. Um, it might be stuck in place. And also, uh, rig the body of the car to the wheels as well. All right. You can animate uh, the curve position, which will allow you to turn the car at a larger customizable radius. Meanwhile, the pivot allows you to adjust uh, relatively from the location of the car that you wanted to pivot on the road. Kind of useful if you want to maybe the car to like be lopsided so one side of the wheels goes up instead of the other. But that's how you can make uh, this car using the easy weld that is on Moon Animator. Now I'm going to show you how to do this through a tool I made called Rig Utility. Now if you install the Rig Utilities plugin uh, from the marketplace, uh, you're going to see this pen icon here so that says activate. If you click on that, you'll get a window that will open up the Rig Utility plugin. Now there are going to be a lot of buttons, but the most important thing that you're going to want to use is the double joint button. This is a tool that allows you to make an extra joint. So, you know, it makes a double joint, which gives you extra flexibility and articulation for that one joint. And this is going to be useful when uh, rigging this uh, brick car design. Okay, first things, you're going to select the, uh, the model and then the body. And then you're going to click on set root of rig. Remember when I duplicate up the body and just kind of set that as root? This is just simply doing that with a just one button press, lickety split. The next step is you want to look and try to find the Motor 60 that is connected from the root to the body. And once you select that root and then press double joint. And once you do that, you will notice that under the body part, there's going to be a new part called body pivot or pivot body. What this is, is it's the part that contains the uh, Motor 60 of this new double joint. Now let's rename this as curve point and let's reselect the uh, uh, body pivot, do the double joint again so we can have the joint that is for the pivoting of the body. And after that, you now have you know, two degrees of articulation from the root of the body to the body of the car for the curve and for the pivot like last time. And as you can see, uh, you know, this very much like simplifies the process of doing these rigs. Now, after all that process is done, I'll try to go a little bit beyond and like tell you how to do the double joint on the wheels as well. That way you can have the wheel spinning, but also rotate vertically so you can animate the car going on a turn. This is pretty simple. Just uh, select all the wheels, Motor 6D, and then do do double joint. There we go. And after that, your car is ready to be animated. Now you can move it around. And for the hell of it, why don't we add a position pivot as well so we can like isolate the uh, positional value and the orientation value of the car um, isolated. The more joints, the better. Now, here and now, I want to explain how in detail you can animate the car with all these joints. Well, first of all, um, let's say you wanted to curve a car. Well, first, we want to decide uh, the center point of the curve. So kind of think of it as a circle. The circle is the path that the car is going to take and then the curve point is where is the center of the circle. Now you have to move that to where uh, you want to curve it relatively. The further away, uh, the bigger the curve. But also if the curve is you know smaller, is like closer to the car, it's going to curve it very sharply. Now as you can see here, I set it like that and you can easily curve it. Now on the other side, the body pivot position kind of works in the same way. First things first, you can move the body of the car and then just kind of shift it to where the pivot point position is. And you can do some crazy like rotation. Um, if you rotate to this pivot point, you can like make it rotate on this uh, peculiar angle. Very interesting. How about let's do something a little bit more complicated. 
let's say that I want the car to move, but uh, I want it to curve in one direction and then curve again in the other direction. How would I do this? Well, first thing that I need to do is you need to, of course, just like I said, move the curve point how you want to curve the car. Remember, the further the curve point uh, from the body of the car, the larger the curve is going to be. However, you'll notice that, you know, when you move the curve position, it's going to move the body of the car. So, um, you know, you're, this car was moving straight forward in its position, but when you move the curve position, it's also going to move the car. How do you fix that? Well, first, you have to go to the frame at the beginning, at the start of when the curve is going to go, and then you're going to press B. Now, change the curve point, and then you'll notice that the car is going to move away from its original position. So how do you get it back to its original position so you can you know, smoothly curve it? Well, you're going to press N, which is going to fix the body of the car back to the uh, back to where it was in that first frame. And to mention, um, you notice those eyes in the timeline. Okay, make sure that all those eyes are disabled but the body, because the body is the one that we want to fix it back to an onion skin. Yeah, the, the, the red thing is called an onion skin. Now, knowing this, this is the process of doing these smooth curves in a drifting animation. You just need to make sure you adjust the body and the curve position instantaneously. And I need to mention instantaneously. Make sure all the frames, when it shifts curves, that they are right next to each other so you don't see a frame where it's like, you know, flying away or something. And doing this, you can do something interesting. Uh, for example, you can make it go into this S curve where it curves to the right and then to the left, kind of creating this S shape. Or you can do something more complicated like a figure eight pattern. You do a lot of things with curve, press B and then N to make sure you fix the body position back to its original place so you can create these very smooth curves. Pretty good on a top down view, but let's say we want to get a different angle of it. That includes the wheels, right? But it'll look weird if the wheels aren't moving. So let's account for that. And because we uh, set up the rig so that um, the vertical position can move independently from the orientation of the wheels while it's spinning, that means you can have it also spin while also rotating vertically. On the other hand, like uh, we can just like uh, use the axles of the car to move it side to side. Okay, now here's a, here's a bit of a tip. Um, if you want to rotate a circle, you can actually achieve this by only using three keyframes. Uh, the first keyframe, you have to rotate by 120 degrees, and then you move up again, do another 120 degrees, and then do it, finish it off in another 120 degrees. And you kind of group everything together and just make it repeat as long as you want. I call this the three keyframes rule for making circles because when you make a circle, I mean, a lot of people think, oh, you only need two keyframes or four keyframes. No, the lowest amount of keyframes you can get is three keyframes. So that, that's kind of a tip. Um, if you want to make something go in a circle, like uniformly, the least amount of keyframes you have to use is three keyframes. You can't use two keyframes because what happens is that if you do that, the object kind of spins back to, to reverse the direction instead of going around doing a 360 degree movement. And the three keyframe method is a little better because you can also control how it tunes in and tunes out, right? And the 4 keyframe is fine, I think it's a lot more intuitive because all you have to do is rotate 9 degrees, 9 degrees, and 9 degrees, and 9 degrees again. But I think it's like one keyframe too excessive to do something like that. Alright, now if you know how to do the wheels, now you can do your drifting animations. Okay, now as an addendum, I figured out a way to make the process of rigging a car way, way faster. So this, this uses the uh, Rigatilly plugin. However, in this version, it actually uses the, I, I think the closest word to it is the API. My, my rig utility plugin, there's something called, uh, there's a global value that has like a table that has all the functionalities you can access. And using this script, you copy this script, and then you select the car, and you make sure the car has a model that's named body and four models, which are named wheels. Actually, you can, you can add as many wheels as you can. Just make sure like every pivot joints is in the center, like, you know, this one is completely in the center. And then you select this, and if you run the code, it'll basically do everything that I told you previously. So <laughs> it takes less than a second to rig everything here. Now, this is not obviously not perfect, right? Because like uh, it doesn't you can't really open the doors or anything. But this is like if you just want to have a car with wheels, this is basically the easiest way you can do this. Now you know the basics of rigging, animating, and drifting. You can experiment and play around with your car models to make cool racing animations for your projects. Perhaps apply principles discussed in the video, curving, skidding, pivoting, and context outside of drift animations. 
I want to shout out V Films and donating a model for this video. If you are the BMW M5 2003, I am thankful for contributing such a well built car for demonstration purposes. If you want to support him, please visit his website, vfilmstudios.com, that sells files of his countless other high quality car models. This has been quite the video. The making recently, uh, we at uh, RSVP has been working to produce more frequent, longer tutorial videos, experimenting to different forms of content. But this is the most traditional video we released in a long while. Apologies, I, pro I promise that we have scripts for other content in the work, but producing them will take more time as we want to elevate the qualities of these longer videos to a higher standard. Additionally, within the RSPP Discord server, we are planning a major event coming soon, which will be a short film contest that will be announced very soon. It will begin this October and end in December, and there's a lot of things we have planned out, so please look forward to and keep up with the news on the channel. But in short, it's a Roblox film contest where you, each submission has a theme of warmth and needs to have the words, uh, it's getting cold outside somewhere in the film, uh, whether it's spoken or it's written or whatever, right? Uh, three minutes minimum, maximum of 20 minutes, and we'll do a live stream screening of each video in December 20th. And we plan on uh, awarding four categories, which will come with a minimum of 500 Robux that we hope we can increase through our fundraising efforts since you know, 500 Robux isn't really that much, and I feel like we should raise the stakes a little bit more. Anyways, uh, this is Rinkun, and thank you for watching. We invite you to be our guest.